It's time to bring out the better world Ian in all of us. Welcome to Better World Ian's Radio with your hosts, Ray, Mary Sue, and Gregory Hansel. Better World Ian's Radio inspires you with the people and ideas that are making the world a better place. You'll hear how small acts can make a big difference every day. Now, here are Ray, Mary Sue, and Gregory. Hi, welcome to Better World Ian's Radio. Better World Ian's Radio is a weekly broadcast whose mission is to uplift and inspire you to make the world a better place. I'm Ray Hansel. Better World Ian's Radio is brought to you by Better World Ian's Foundation and is co-hosted by the family team that created the popular social game on Facebook called A Better World. A Better World rewards players for doing good deeds in the real and virtual world while helping to raise money and awareness for charities. So far, over 40 million good deeds have been done in a better world by more than 4 million people around the globe in over 100 countries. These good deeds include expressions of gratitude, acts of kindness, and sending notes to real-world sick kids, just to name a few. This week on Better World Ian's Radio, we welcome John McConnell, the founder and president of Cristo Ray Philadelphia, a college preparatory school for students who cannot otherwise afford a private education. John retired as a partner at the management consulting firm Deloitte in order to lead the, the founding of Cristo Ray Philadelphia High School. He has served as chairman of the board at St. Joe's Prep. He's an active parishioner at St. Catherine of Siena in Wayne, Pennsylvania. He's also a graduate of Georgetown University and earned a master's in business administration degree from the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School. Hi, John. Thanks so much for joining us today on Better World News Radio. Hi, Ray, and thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. I'd like to begin by having you tell our listeners a little bit about the Cristo Ray mission and how that's accomplished. Well, the Cristo Ray mission really began in Chicago in 1996 with a school on the south side in Pilsen, and that school still exists. But now today there are 32 Cristo Ray schools in the United States, uh, and they all follow the same what we call mission standards. So that would mean our purpose. And, and the purpose of all the Cristo Ray schools is to serve uh, very low-income students who want to go to college, but who, because of the circumstances in their cities, uh, have almost no access to high-quality college prep education. So the Cristo Ray Network serves about almost 11,000 students now across the country in 32 different schools, all preparing for uh, not just to get into college, but to get in and out of college and graduate. Hmm, that's amazing. And you say that that's ele- close to 11,000 students have gone through the Cristo Ray organiz- uh, 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 sets of schools around the country? Actually, no, many more than 11 have gone through, but 11,000 students are sitting in desks in Cristo Ray schools right today. Oh, my gosh. What, what's the impact been? Well, uh, I, I, the impact is that Thousands and thousands of very low-income kids across the country are going to college and graduating from college, and these are kids that, because of their circumstances, because of the fact that they were born into poverty, would have otherwise had no chance to to go to college, and they are going and they're graduating, they're getting terrific jobs after they graduate. Mm -hmm. And what about the socioeconomic impact of these kids going through and having that opportunity versus you know, being confined by the, the circumstances of their, uh, of their life. Well, the irony of education in most of the cities in the United States today is that uh, the students who need high-quality education to escape poverty and earn a, a life of dignity are the exact same students who have the hardest time getting access to high-quality education. And that's the purpose of the Crystal Ray Schools. It's to provide high-quality education to these kids who uh, would otherwise have none and, and without it would almost have no chance to escape poverty. Those of us in the network and all of us in the school in Philadelphia uh, believe that the only really reliable, historically reliable way for families to escape generational poverty is through education. And yet poor people have the hardest time getting education. So that's why the schools exist. Mm -hmm. Now, you founded Cristo Ray Philadelphia in 2012, just a few short years ago. What what inspired you to do that? Well, I I would say several things. First of all, uh, I was fortunate enough to receive a very high-quality education from the time I entered preschool. 
Uh, I went to a terrific grade school, terrific high school, terrific college, graduate school. And, you know, that was all that all had nothing to do with my uh, deserving it. I just happened to be born to parents who could afford that and, and, and basically gave that gift of education to me. Uh, the kids that we serve uh, have no such good luck. Uh, so we offer to them the same thing that was offered to me. Uh, so that, that, that was one of the motivating factors. The other was, as you mentioned, uh, I was chairman of the board at St. Joe's Prep, Philadelphians know that St. Joe's Prep is one of the finest college prep schools uh, uh, in the country. Um, and uh, But while I was chairman of the board there, I used to say that uh, the boys who are going to St. Joe's Prep uh, are very fortunate to go here. But in, the fact of the matter is, because of their own family circumstances, living in wealth, right. um, they would probably do just fine no matter where they went to high school. Right. So I said we ought to find we ought to build a school that was just as good in quality as St. Joe's Prep but would serve people who would completely change their lives. You know that's funny you mentioned that because I remember when my son went to Malvern Prep. Sorry to say that on the air, <laughs> but but he he had a he had a a recruiter at the time who said to me, you know, uh, your son probably academically could do well in any of the schools that you could send him to in your region. He said, but but here he's going to enter an environment an environment where doing well is the norm, not the unusual. Yep. And, and that's that, right. And that really set him apart. And he did exceptionally well there and went on, just as you did. So I can see what you're saying. I can see that that's true for, for many of the schools throughout the region and throughout the country that well, uh, do that. Uh, yep, that's right. That's right. Speaking, speaking of Malvern, you might be interested to know that, uh, in fact, any better worldian would be interested to know that it is – People from Malvern and people from St. Joe's Prep and people from terrific educational institutions around the city that are the supporters of Cristo Rey Philadelphia High School. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's how we got the school started, and that's how we sustain the model on an ongoing basis. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's really a great example of Better Worldians in action. And I think that's really nice because it's a generational thing. You can see that we're actually preparing these young people to be Better Worldians for the future. So, so tell me, what's the feedback been like from these Cristo Rey students? What are they telling you about their experience there? Well, well, well. First of all, let me tell you exactly what the experience is. We, we, the school is not a uh, charter school, and we don't get any funding from the uh, state of Pennsylvania. The school is also not funded at all by the church in Philadelphia or by any church in Philadelphia, uh, and of course, it's not funded either by tuition, because if a family could afford to pay tuition, we wouldn't admit them to the school. They would be too wealthy. Right. Uh, so the way we fund the school is that every student who uh, comes to Cristo Rey goes to school four days a week, and they work a job one day a week, and they work a job that we get them, and they are jobs in 90 of Philadelphia's finest companies, like Comcast and Independence Blue Cross and banks, law firms, accounting firms, and they do real work, and they earn real money, and the money they earn goes back to the school to uh, fund the majority of the cost of their education. Mm-hmm. So an ex- the student's experience at Cristo Rey includes work, and it includes work in fantastic experiences. And it is that experience that we believe helps them develop real-world skills and go on to college and be successful in college. So it's a remarkable experience for a 14-year-old to go to school for four days and then go to a law firm or a bank or an accounting firm for on that fifth day. Yeah, I can imagine that this really prepares them for college in other ways because I would I would imagine that people looking at the resume and the application coming in from a Cristo Rey student with that kind of work experience to supplement that and also the character that it builds really probably influences them to accept that student, doesn't it? You're exactly right. The work-study program is maybe first a financial miracle in that it it enables a student to go to a school like this who couldn't otherwise do it. But that's really not the biggest miracle. The biggest miracle is the experience that that provides to the student, that the, the, um, the vista that it provides to a bigger world and, and the, uh, the fact that it shows the student that they have a rightful place uh, in that bigger world. They can be a doctor. They can be a lawyer. And that's the miracle of Crystal Ray. 
That's the miracle of Crystal Ray. That's amazing. And it is a miracle when you see the, the transformational effect that that can have. Uh, I, I, I just want to make one more comment about that, that, that breaking out of that neighborhood is, is, is like breaking the paradigm of what's expected of the students or the kids that age in that sphere. And instead of actually falling into a, the rut the, of, of, of a generational poverty, it says, well, there's a much bigger world out here. Look at this. Look at Comcast. Look at this experience I'm having. Oh, now I've got a different job next year. And, and so this is – and by the way, one of, our, one of our people, one of our staffers uh, here mentioned when we told them that we were going to be on the program, she says, don't you remember when you recruited me to come work here? She says, I had just supervised a work-study program of Christo Ray uh, students out in Minneapolis. I said, oh, yeah, that's right. And, and she just raved about her experience with the Christo Ray student population. So we had a firsthand experience wow. ourselves. Yeah, great. That's great. terrific. Yeah, isn't it? Yep. We're going to talk more about Crystal Ray Philadelphia in a moment, but right now I'd like to take a brief break to tell our listeners a bit about our game on Facebook called A Better World. A Better World is a virtual world game on Facebook that encourages habits of goodness, positive mindsets, and giving to social causes to make a positive difference in the world. Players actually do things like express gratitude for some of the things that are happening in their life, share acts of kindness, and they even send get well notes to real world sick children and many, many more. As a part of what we do here, we also have a charity of the month, and so we actually allocate funds uh, that we that we distribute to specific charities. And this month, we're happy to share that Christo Ray Philadelphia is our charity partner for the month of September. We're challenging our players in a better world to complete 250,000 good deeds in the game this month. When they do, and we're sure that they will, we will release funds to provide transportation for those same Christo Ray students to get to and from their work-study programs. You can find out more about abetterworld.com. You can find out more about the entire program at abetterworld.com. So now let's get back to our conversation with John McConnell, founder and president of Christo Ray Philadelphia. So, so we talked a little bit about the, the experience with the students. Uh, what, what have the students actually told you about this experience themselves? I mean, I'm sure you interact with them on a regular basis. Oh, I do, and they tell us a lot of different things. First of all, from an academic point of view, they tell us from the first day all the way to the last day that it's really hard. They say it's rigorous, and we, they take lots of math and science and Latin and and they um, they like to sound like they're complaining, but in fact, I really think they enjoy the rigor of the work. As far as the work study program is concerned, they like it from the first day. It's a it's a unique experience for them to uh, leave their neighborhood, go downtown. Even the fact of going downtown is a unique experience to many of our students. Uh, and then they go into these office buildings and they're treated. Uh, uh, politely and respectfully by people that they really have never encountered before and they learn about a different kind of a way of uh, working and living that they didn't have never experienced before so I I remember even in our first year a student who was working at CHOP um, a hospital in Philadelphia uh, came to me and th- this young lady had never been to Center City before and now she said, Mr. McConnell, I've been working at CHOP and I think I have my life figured out. I'm going to be a pediatric oncologist. Mm-hmm. Of course, I had to ask her what that meant. <laughs> uh, but, she, but, she, but she was convinced that that's where she was going to go and of course she had no idea what that was uh, before she started at Crystal Ray. Yeah, that opened up the world for them. You know, we had, a, a, we had a, about a year or so ago, we had Mark Vetri of the Vetri uh, restaurant organization he has a, a foundation called Vetri Foundation. They actually bring fresh cooked meals to children in that in, in, in the elementary school uh, throughout some of the same uh, regions that you serve in Philadelphia. And his experience was that for the first time, these people saw vegetables that they had never seen, and they saw them prepared in a way that they hadn't experienced. So I think opening that world, that world that exists for us and not for others, is a great way to function and really promote uh, the kind of work that we're doing here at A Better Orleans. Um, so well, may, may, maybe the world of Better Orleans is getting smaller because Mark Vetri also provides healthy breakfasts and lunches here at Crystal Ray. And so our kids get that same fantastic experience of eating fresh, healthy foods every day. And that's all thanks to Mark. Oh, that, that's fantastic. There's a, there's a nod in, in, in another direction for one of our other Better Orleans. Now, you had your first graduating spring, uh, spring class this, this past year, 
And from what I understand, 100% of the students were accepted a four-year college. What, what does that mean to you? Well, that's, uh, I like to say that's half time of our goal. Our, our goal at Crystal Ray is to graduate from college. So we were thrilled that 100% of our first class of graduates were accepted into college. And I say that's just like going into the locker room at halftime with a lead, yeah. that we still have the second half to play, mm -hmm. and the second half is graduate from college. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're thrilled that they were all accepted. We're thrilled that 40% of the class, or roughly 40 of our kids, um, are going to college uh, on on a full ride, a room and board, and, and our students are not going to um, just ordinary colleges. They're going to some of the finest colleges in the country, NYU, Georgetown, Villanova, St. Joe's, Temple, terrific schools. Mm. So we're very proud of that. Mm. So that th th brings up another question I had planned to ask. You started to answer it already, and that is that your students are kept tabs on by some of your staff. They, they, they keep a watch on what's going on after they graduate. So how do they do that? Do they encourage the students to communicate directly to some of the uh, staffers, or uh, do they automatically uh, follow up with the students as well? Well, our school, like, like almost every one of the Crystal Ray schools, hires uh, a staff of people to keep tabs with our graduates while they're in college and and that's pretty close tabs we we understand the courses that they're enrolled in and the grades that they're getting and where they're living and uh, a part-time job that they may have and we visit them uh, periodically maybe once a semester wherever they happen to be hmm. and make sure that you know that uh, simple little problems get solved as opposed to becoming a reason for dropping out mm -hmm. Well, you might be interested to know that this woman who works for us, who I mentioned had the experience working in supervisory, in supervisory capacity work study program, actually she still keeps tabs <laughs> with the students that she had many years ago out in Minneapolis. They and this is a work study situation, so it's not yeah. an employee yeah. of Christo Ray; it's a, an affiliate organization, like in this case, I guess a Comcast or somebody else, a Chop. That basically here somebody is has long since left that particular company and still keeps a tab. The students take the initiative, and sometimes she does as well. So that connection is really strong uh, throughout the community. Yep. That's really great. Yep. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, all of us who work with these kids, and when I say all of us, I mean the faculty and the staff and our work-study partners, the supervisors, uh, you know, come to know them as though they were our own kids. And uh, so uh, it doesn't surprise me that they have stuck together and that uh, they keep track of each other and uh, are celebrating their success together. So what's been the most rewarding aspect of all this for you? Well, uh, certainly that graduation event, at least for now, was a very rewarding aspect. Uh, that showed that, we're, we're, uh, that this school works, this model works, and, uh, and you know, we're, hopefully we're going to get the results for these terrific kids that we uh, anticipated. Uh, the, the other thing that is uh, rewarding to me is to see how our community – uh, in Philadelphia has rallied around this model. You know, this model requires the collaboration of businesses, of universities, of the elementary schools that our kids come from, mm -hmm. of health care agencies in town, of, as you brought up, Mark Vetri and people like that. Mm -hmm. So this Christo Ray school is a pretty um, extensive collaboration of a lot of different entities in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. all <clears throat> for the purpose of doing good for these kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Really, really good stuff. Do you have some favorite success story or story that you want to share with us uh, about a, a child or a student? Well, you know, we, we have a lot of students who um, on the first day, uh, you would never expect could make it you know they their communication skills are uh not what you would expect in a law firm in the city and uh their habits for studying are are not refined or and to see those kids turn around it really gives you confidence not just in the kids in the school but really of every kid mm -hmm. uh in philadelphia who who uh even at 14 years old hasn't had access to quality education it just makes you think that with the right 
access to quality education, uh, the Philadelphia workforce and our entire community has resources in it that are beyond our imagination. Mm, this is really this is really great stuff. How, how do you how do you suppose we ask this question of all of our guests at the end of our program? How do you suppose that Christo Ray is helping to make the world a better place? Well, you know, I, I think we are offering the better world that most of us already know that you and I know, and we're offering access to that to thousands of kids across the country who would otherwise have no access to it. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I I think that's pretty significant. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. It's very significant. I'm reminded of a program that we did not too long ago with a, uh, a guy from Scotland uh, by the Mm -hmm. name of, uh, what's his name? Magnus McFarlane Barrow. That was his name. That's his name. And uh, he started a program called Mary's Meals, which emanated from his and his brothers just going over to Eastern Europe and pitching in and helping people in a war-torn area. And now today they are focusing on giving away a million bowls of porridge. It's the daily meal for a million kids every single day in villages around Africa. And the byproduct of this is guess where they get the the meal? They get the meal at school. So effectively, it's opening this exact same type of experience uh, on a very different level where people are starving to death and you're bringing to them not only the nourishment they need to survive, but also the nourishment in the mind. And I think that's what Christo Ray really is offering is, is, is the glimpse of a better world for students who otherwise would not see it. So congratulations on the great work you're doing there. For our, our listeners, um, you can learn more about Christo Ray Philadelphia by going to ChristoRayPhiladelphia.org. John, thank you so much for joining us today on Better World Ian's Radio. Well, thank you, Ray. Thanks for having us. You're very, very welcome. Better World Ian's Radio is brought to you by Better World Ian's Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit whose mission is to make the world a better place by encouraging the very best in everyone. We believe it's essential to plant flowers, not just pull weeds. So we focus on positive thinking, positive values, and positive actions. In short, our vision is to bring out the Better World Ian in everyone so that we can all make it a better world. Uh, but we certainly could you, use your help at this point. Donations support our Better Audience Radio podcast, as well as go toward developing new features like articles, videos, blogs, and more. So if you want to pitch in and help us, go to betterworldians.com and be part of our mission here as well. And until next time, everyone, please be a better worldian.